Lesson three, we are going to do what I like to call the articulation experiments. And uh, perhaps if you're in high school, you've taken some chemistry or physics classes, uh, and you've done some experiments where you, you look at the data and, and you do a study. Well, I want you to sort of have that in mind as we're looking at these experiments. And these experiments will tell us important aspects of articulation. And I think they help determine what method we use for articulation on the bassoon and when it's appropriate. So let's get on with the articulation experiments. What you will need is a vocal and a reed, a reed that is soaked, that is. And for these experiments, I would like you to take a piece of paper and sort of make a little graph, a little chart. But first, I'll start with a little quiz here. And let's see how well you do. How many ways can you think of that we can start and stop tones on the bassoon? I can think of five ways. See how many of these ways you can put down in your piece of paper. I encourage you now to stop the video and to try to think of the different ways in which we start and stop tones on the bassoon. Okay, so how did you do? Most of my students are able to find three ways in which to start and stop tones on the bassoon. First way being stopping and starting the air. The next being the embouchure. If you close off the reed all the way, it doesn't vibrate. It doesn't matter how hard you blow, it doesn't matter anything like that. If you close off the reed all the way, it doesn't vibrate. Uh, a third way is with the tongue. And I actually split this up into two ways, a third and a fourth way. The tip of the tongue on the reed is one way to stop it. And also the tongue, if it touches the roof, roof of the mouth in what we call double tongue or um, varied other tonguing techniques that you might use in, in, towards the, the roof of your mouth and the back of the tongue is another way to stop this. And the fifth way is very uncommon. It's one that we don't use with wind instruments, although I've heard a few people use it, but this is called the glottal stop. And if you just go ah, uh, ah, uh, and stop right there, you're stopping that tone with the glottis, and that can also stop the, uh, the tone on the bassoonery. But, uh, that's not something we use for stopping the tone in the wind playing, and I don't advocate that. So you now have, well, let's just, just say three basic ways. You've got the air stop, you have the stop with the embouchure, and the stop with the um, tongue. Now we're going to test each one of those methods. So I want you to make a diagram like the one I'm showing on the screen right now. One for charting the air, one for charting the embouchure, and then one for charting the tongue. Now, take your vocal, take your reed, and we're doing this experiment on the vocal because it is unstable. Makes a great little party instrument. We want it on New Year's Eve. Um, but it allows us to hear the signatures of each of these types of articulation. And by signature, I mean the characteristics of these types of articulation. So the very first one we're going to test out is the air articulation. I want you to keep the jaw the same, the embouchure the same, and just start with the air, increase the air speed, increase uh, like a crescendo, and then decrease it. But keeping this the same all together. And I'll do the experiment for you right here. And I started with the tongue. This time I'll start without the tongue. Ah, did you hear the change in pitch there? As I increased the air, the pitch went up. 
as I decreased the, the air, the pitch went down. Okay, put that on your chart right now. Next, we're going to test the embouchure. So I want you to take the embouchure. If this is the reed and this is the embouchure, I want you to close off the reed altogether. Then you're going to drop your jaw, you're going to release it, the reed's going to vibrate, and then you're going to close it off again. So let me do the embouchure articulation. Did you hear how the pitch scooped down as I opened my jaw and then it went up as I closed my jaw? Very important. This is a characteristic of the double reed, as is the air, air, uh, the air shape. Uh, and then last of all, the tongue. So we're going to take the reed, put your tongue on it, the air starts, the embouchure is all set, you release the tongue, reed vibrates, and then you put the tongue back on the reed. And let's see what the characteristic signature of that is. You hear it's just, just a straight tone on that. Okay, you've got to make sure to chart that as well. Now, with those three determinations, now we're going to find out the speed of each articulation. So, I want you to stop and start the tone as quickly as you can with the air. I can't do it very fast. So I would characterize that tempo as, as sort of slow. Next, I want you to take the reed in the embouchure and stop and start with the embouchure as rapidly as you can. I can do that much quicker. You can hear that. Uh, but I don't have a lot of control. You can hear how, how the notes, some of the notes are sagging and things. And then with the tongue, the single tongue, very rapid. So we have learned some very important things right now as a result of our articulation experiments. And these results will carry over to our playing. So we have learned that if we're going to choose an articulation by itself, the tongued articulation is superior. It's superior, one, because it retains an even pitch. Number two, for speed. Now, like many people, I don't appreciate every note being stopped with the tongue, as it were, like a sausage cut off at the end. That, that tends to be rude, tends to be abrupt. So often, and I and, and many others, what we do is we use a combination of the air and the embouchure to shape the ending of the note. We start each note with the tongue, but we shape the ending with the air and the embouchure. And with proper shaping, remember when the air drops, pitch is going to go down, so the embouchure has to compensate that for that with tightening.